welcome to the stage, Gareth. All right. Hi, everyone. Awesome. All right. You had a good day so far? Yeah? yeah. All ready for lunch? <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm now the thing standing between you and some barbecues, so I will try not to waffle on too much. That wasn't an intended food pun. I just realised it just before I came on stage. Uh, so, <laughs> so, I'm going to talk to you today about disasters. So, as Magento developers, we do face them from time to time. So, and obviously, it's very easy to panic. So, what I'm going to talk about here is a bit of a process to follow to help you deal with it. Deal with it and don't panic. So, yeah, working with Magento is hard. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I did not expect that reaction. So yeah, Magento's got this funny way of making you feel happy, angry, challenged, accomplished. Yeah, that was just last week, uh, but I've been doing it for nine years, so it's, it's that, I mean, to be honest, that's why it's my favourite platform, I just love the pain. So, um, <laughs> But if you layer in a disaster on top of that, that, that can make it horrible. So this is, this is, we, we can deal with these. So when I'm talking about a disaster, that's, that's, these are the things I'm talking about. So effectively, it's things that will stop the, the, the website taking money in Magento, but obviously it's just not just applicable to, to Magento. It's just anything that stops you accessing the site or stop it critically functioning. Uh, could also be the Everton score this afternoon. We'll see. So, but at the end of the day, this, that's what these sites need to do. So they need to work. So, Overall, how should you deal with the disaster when it strikes then? So, first of all, you've got to stay calm. So, T-shirt. Uh, the the T-shirt alone doesn't work. So, um, if, you, if you stay calm during a disaster, you are going to make better decisions. You're not going to rush. You're going to think things through a bit better. So, however, obviously, that's easier said than done. So, this is where you need a process, and, and this is where you need to communicate. So, communicating to people will... It gives you, I mean, it gives you uh, like the rubber ducking type situation. So you, you will get feedback from what you're doing, but it also makes people think that you're doing something because in a, in a disaster situation, it, 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 if, you, if you're getting like blank noise back from people, they are gonna, they're gonna get more angry at you perhaps and you're not dealing with it. So if you've got a, a process uh, in place to deal with this as well, um, that it, it will leave as little thinking as possible to the person dealing with the disaster because, I mean, you, you just want to be focused on fixing it. So if you, if you don't have, like, some, some overall process in place, you're going to have uh, vagueness and the things that are unclear, and you don't want that. So, so um, yeah. So as with any good process, we, we need an acronym. So oh, I've come up with one. So here's a handy, handy acronym for you. I'm, well, I could shout it, but I'm on speaker, so ah. So, <laughs> so yes, yeah. So ah, yeah. I'm not going to put so much effort that time. Um, so this is the process you need when dealing with a disaster. So let's go through what what are the, what are the letters? What do we have here? So, so. Oh, Speaking about them high level, then we'll go through each. But we've got um, acknowledging, uh, sorry, acknowledging the disaster, researching the disaster, responding to it. Is it disaster then resolved? Gathering evidence after it's done, and then any hindsight you can do to help you deal with this again in the future. So let's go through each of those. So the first step of acknowledging any issue that you deal with is actually to make sure it is actually an issue. So. Uh, Back in my first job, fresh out of uni, we had this uh, client who would phone us. And we were answering the phones as the developers, which was a choice. Um, <laughs> uh, and we'd, they'd, they'd phone up, write my website's down, okay. So we'd go check, well, no, it's fine. And I would say probably 99 times out of the 100 times they phoned, it was because their router needed rebooting. They just, so we became experts in their router setup, as well as their website. So, so it's always worth making sure. So um, once it's verified, that's where the communication kicks in. So tell people. So if, if the client didn't tell you, tell them. Tell your team as well. So 
that your fellow developers, they might need to give you a bit of space to focus on the issue. They might have a PR that you, you, they're waiting for from you. This, you're not going to get to it right now. So make sure sure people know. Then also, um, when I say make space to focus, well, that, so commu communication will be part of that. So you'll, you'll get a bit of space from people talking to you. But also, if, you, if it's possible, get, get yourself in a decent, like, I don't know, put some noise cancelling headphones on, go to a quieter room if you've got kids in the background. One thing I won't recommend, and this is from personal experience, is uh, don't deal with a my school restart when you're on a night out in Brighton, it's out on the beach. It's not fun. It worked, though. We, we got it sorted. Um, so, you've acknowledged the issue. Now it's time to kick in and do the research. So, this is probably where you're going to spend most of your time because you're, you're investigating the issue. So, but one thing, again, it, it, and I'm going to keep banging the drum of communication. Communication is important here because um, someone might have done something to the site unintentionally. So, be that, I know. Enabling a sales rule with 2,000 products, making the checkout run at 60 seconds, Re rebooting the production server instead of a staging server, things like, things like that. Someone may have done something. So you've got to ask around, ask, ask everyone, anyone involved in the project. And if you're lucky enough to have project doc documentation, check there too. Sorry, my throat has gone really dry. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> I'm a bit nervous. Uh, so um, check the project documentation. So um, if this has happened before, there might be notes to deal with it. There, there might not be. Unlucky, but there, there might be. Um, also, obviously, there are lots of third parties involved in any website, especially Magento. I might need to keep my head at a certain place. Um, yeah, so check those two. So make sure you're actually... Um, so it could be Cloudflare's gone down. It does occasionally. Um, and if, if it's not, then, okay, you, you move to the investigation step. So when you've, um, so I'm not going to list the, the whole thing, the uh, various places to investigate here, because otherwise we won't have lunch, and I might not be so happy about that. So, the, but it's the classics. So things like checking the logs, checking admin, checking uh, for any, uh, like, new relic, things like that. So go and investigate, get as much evidence as you can of what's going on. So you've done your research. Now it's time to put any solutions that you found into action. So you're stepping up. You know what you're doing. You can crack on. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so Ben stepped into action there. Um, he's responded to the disaster of a dry throat. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> So, so you choose your action that, that you're going to do from your research, and then you try it to see what, see what happens. So has that resolved the issue? So you might, you, you're only going to get one or two answers out of that. So if, if it's a no, then you just rinse and repeat. You, can, you, you try it again. Find something else. You might have to go back to research. You might have to pull other people in. But you know, keep, keep talking to people. Tell them what you're doing, and just report the facts. If something doesn't work, don't be scared to tell people. Just be open, honest, and just report the facts and keep moving. So, is it resolved? Yes, awesome. Now, is it time to relax, though? Well, no, not no. It's not really. It is yes because the the, the immediate pain's passed, but no because when it's just happened, it's, it's fresh. So you can actually. Uh, this is the best time to make the notes of what's happened to try and help prevent it in the future. So, this is where the gathering evidence kicks in. So. Write up, write up a report, and it, obviously I'm talking like reams of, of pages here, but a write up a report of what's happened, when it happened, who was involved. Now, that's not to, to say like you're going to blame people here, but it's so that if it happens again, you, you know who to talk to, um, or someone else knows who to talk to, if it was you. So and write, note down what the solution was. So you can, you can make that as detailed or as like, li simple as possible. It, it, but keep, keep, like, do everything that's relevant to, 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 the, um, to the incident. So you've dealt with the issue, you've written up your report, you can finally move on with your life. Almost, almost, you're so very close. So it's good to take stock of any actions that you could possibly do after the disaster's happened. So 
if, it, if the issue is caused by user behavior, um, then, then work out what education needs to happen for that not to happen again. If, it, if there was a, I suppose a process fail that allowed that user to do the thing that they were going to do, close that hole. So that's a, it's a good thing to take stock there. So make any improvements to um, any infrastructure, deployment, any code changes. If they need to be deployed, get, get them, get them actioned in through onto the site as soon as possible. I'll just grab this again. So, and if there's any way automation could have solved this, look, look at that. So if, if there are any early warnings you could have got, and if there are any scripts that you could have put in place to prevent these things, then, then do that too. Right, so project documentation, I went to it before, but it is important. So, um, and this is where I go back, going back to where I was saying about leaving as little thinking as possible. So project documentation is good for that. So if you've got any, like, if you need to know how to restart a service, who to contact at a third party, um, any certain key modules that are likely to misbehave, have them all noted down. So that if someone needs to do something on that site in, in the situation of a disaster, they've got the commands ready to go and they don't have to look through bash history or things like that. Cool. So... I'm way ahead of time, which is not a disaster. Um, so, <laughs> over, overall then. So, communication, I've, I've said it a few times, it really is key. So, talk to everyone. When you're dealing with it, it will help you relax because you're, you're voicing your concerns. Um, I suppose the one caveat to that is if you're in an out of hours situation and you are on your own, but still try and communicate anyway because that will help you gather your evidence later on because you're telling someone something, so you'll have that in the notes there. So as part of that, the communication, you make sure you've got a process. Communicate that process with your team and make sure it gets followed. And then that will allow you to not panic. So thank you. Actually, I've got, I've got something to, uh, else to do. So, um, <laughs> right, so uh, just before we break for lunch, um, we've got a video. <coughs> oh, I don't have sound. At this year's Mage Titans event. I hope you've been enjoying the day so far. My name is Joe, and I work for Young Lives vs. Cancer, this year's chosen charity for the Mage Titans event. And I just wanted to take this opportunity to let you know how the money raised today will help children and young people with cancer to overcome everything that their diagnosis throws at them. To set the scene for you, today, 12 children and young people will hear the devastating news that they have cancer. A cancer diagnosis is shocking, overwhelming, isolating, and completely unfair, especially when you're young. It takes over your life. Treatment is grueling and often takes place far away from home. And your ambitions and dreams, things like your education, relationships, travel, can suddenly seem very far away. There's also a huge financial cost to looking after a sick child through things like traveling to and from hospital, paying for parking, meals, heating. It costs a family an extra 730 pounds a month to care for a sick child, money that most families simply don't have. Cancer then brings a whole host of worries, problems and challenges that can leave you feeling totally overwhelmed, like you're constantly fighting fires. One problem is extinguished, and then another one flares up. That's where Young Lives vs Cancer comes in. Through our amazing social workers and our homes from home, we help families to put out those fires and to deal with everything cancer throws at them. We help young people with cancer to thrive during their treatment rather than simply surviving. Young Lives vs Cancer social workers are there to provide young people and families with the emotional support they need to help them keep going through their darkest days. They are someone you can turn to when you're feeling overwhelmed, when it's all too much, and they'll be that friendly face and caring friend that you need at that time. And they'll not only listen to you, but they'll take active steps to help as well. They can liaise with schools, with work, with government departments like the DWP on your behalf. They fight for you when you don't feel like you have the energy to do anymore. Young Lives vs Cancer social workers also provide financial support through our hardship and compassionate grants. Last year, 
our social worker teams throughout the UK paid out 5,088 grants to families worth just under £1 million to make sure that families could make ends meet and ensure they didn't need to worry about money when their child is sick. Overall, last year our teams across the UK supported over 6,000 families through their cancer journeys. It's these families that the money raised by the Mage Titans event today will help support. Thanks for taking the time to hear about Young Lives vs. Cancer's vital work, and I hope you enjoy the rest of today's event. And thank you so much once again for the support of everyone at Mage Titans. The difference your support will make to children and young people with cancer is huge. Yeah. Yeah, so I think, uh, I think you'll agree it's a very worthy cause. So there is a QR code there if you want to donate as well. We set up a Just Giving page. So we'll give you, we'll leave it on screen for a minute, well, for a bit. Um, so just before we break for lunch as well, if we gather on the orange, red panels over there, we'll do a uh, group photo together. Um, thankfully, the weather stayed nice. So yeah, cool. Thank you and have a great lunch, everyone. <laughs>